Hey guys, just got this uh, totally awesome Razor E200 off the side of the road yesterday. And then notice it's got some mistreatment here. It looks like a couple of broken wires. Let's clean it up, fix the electrical, and uh, see if she runs. First thing I'm gonna do is use a simple wire cutter and open this wire up to have a look. I think it's a dual wire, so below the rubber shielding, I think there's two wires, so we want to be real careful that we just cut away the outer core, the outer edge of this rubber shielding to reveal inside. And I'm right, there are two wires inside. I don't know if the camera can show that, but it's red and black. So we're going to separate that on both sides, and then I'm probably going to try to do two individual spice splices, one for each wire. First thing I'm going to do is individually strip. Uh, that's the word I was looking for before. Strip the shielding off of each wire. Okay, ready? We're going to do the first one. This is the red wire where I crimp this little sucker. I'm using a, a serious uh, crimping tool here. You don't need one of these. You can use a much uh, cheaper, just a little manual crimp squeezing tool there. Aesthetic bullets. I'm just going to wrap this in electrical tape and I'll probably in the future cut this off, strip them more so they can be separated, and use nicer shrink wrappable bullets, which I would hit with a heat gun and they would shrink nicely. There you go. All bundled up. Super. So just a little zip tie, keep things neat so they don't get caught up when it's being rowed, ridden, rided, <laughs> I don't know. There you go. Nothing like a couple of zip ties to keep things neat and tidy. Just cut that right there. Okay. Next step's gonna be to get it charged. I'm gonna put it on the charger right now. Of course, I've never actually seen this bike function, so who knows if it'll work. I'm gonna just hook this all up right here. So I plugged it in, and it says charge okay. It's supposed to be blinking red. Yet over here, the power button lights up, so now it's getting power. I'm gonna let it sit for a bit just to make sure. The charge light never turned red. I'm gonna go push it and see if it actually runs. I don't think it's charged, I think it's lying. Nope, not running. <clears throat> okay, so the situation is that the charging light is staying green rather than turning red. Nerds on the internet claim it's a defect in the charger, but it's actually charging. So we're gonna test that theory right now with the multimeter. We're gonna set it to 20. Yeah, I'll set it to 200. And let's find out what it reads. I think it should read 24. 27.9, close enough. So in fact, even though the light is green, it's actually putting full charge into the scooter. So we're gonna take the screws off and have a look underneath. See what's going on.
Yep. There you go. There's the bolt. He's going to hold the bolt still and turn the screw. Okay. And there you go. Let's get a peek at the batteries. There you go. Two 12 volts. We can get these replaced on eBay. And um, probably going to do that, but just want to make sure they're charging properly. Make sure the charger is working. I may take them out and try to charge them with a different charger. Like a normal charger. The first thing I want to do is, is make sure they even have a charge at all. So we're going to just unclip them. Right there. I think they're in, a, in series, so we gotta be real careful about unclipping them. And getting them out, there's almost no room for them. It's so tight. There you go. There's one. There's the other. It's uh, attached to the charging switch. So you just wanna get that off. Where's this one going? Down there, that's tight too. Got it. So now, there you go. Here's your two batteries in the circuit together. I'm gonna stick the black in the black. And the red in the red. Oh yeah. Those are some pathetic numbers right there. All right, I'm gonna reconnect them and plug them in, see what happens. Okay, they're plugged in. As usual, the light is green and not red. Okay, so now since it's plugged in, let's see what's actually happening here. We're gonna stick the black in the black, the red in the red, and look for some juice. 17.4 volts. So the battery charger is sending power to the batteries. The fact that it's staying green the whole time perhaps means the batteries are no good. It's trying to tell us the batteries have failed. Okay, despite my best efforts, I could not get these batteries to charge. So I took my clippers and I cut the wires off. So I'm left with this. And I'm gonna take these off and replace them with new batteries. So it goes red, black, red, black. Here are my two new batteries. Link to these batteries in the description. And we're just going to crimp on new attachments to these wires right here. So I'm gonna take four that look like this. And I'm just gonna crimp them onto the current wires, making sure they fit snugly, which they do. So let's get started. First things first is to strip a little bit off that original wire and crimp on the new end. I'm using a cheap crimper. I have a very expensive crimper, but I'm using a cheap one. And I'll link it to you in the description so you can get one just like this. A nice, easy, cheap crimper. Piece of cake. Right there, there's our new end. And we're going to do that same process to the rest of the wires as well. So, just like this, trimmed off a little piece. And I'm gonna put this guy on it, just like that. Push it in. And crimp it on. There you go. Shiny new ends to go to our new battery. Okay, let's do this. This is how they get laid in. This way. One here. Real tight. And one here. Again, real tight. Like that. Real tight. 
getting this thing hooked up is um, going to be a little less than fun, but we're going to give it a go. Long one to the back, okay, right there. Right, short one. To the front. carefully in the back like so lay this one down carefully in the front like so but after we connect the red one I'm going to plug the rest of the stuff back in. I know it was hard to see exactly how I wired this, but when you take yours apart, just take pictures of it. Take pictures of everything, and you can go back and reference how it was wired. It's not terribly confusing, but it can become confusing if you don't remember. And it's super hard to get a good clean angle of this job. But if you take pictures of it, you won't have so much trouble remembering where everything went. Now to put stuff back on the uh, little breaker switch of a majiggy here. Red on the bottom, black on the top. Again, I only remember this because I took pictures. We're going to plug it in and see what happens. Okay, ready? Here goes. What we're looking for is this light to turn red to mean it's charging instead of green. And there it goes. The light is red. So the batteries are actually properly charging now. I'll wait a gazillion hours and I'll be back with the results. Already after a few hours it says charged okay. The light turned green. So I just put this on and stuck two bolts just finger tight so I can go test it and if it works I'll button it up nicely. Let's find out. Okay, so it's the Razor E200 E200 scooter here. It's got a flat rear tire. Totally dead, bunch of crap. And uh, we're gonna undead it. First things first, it looks like you're gonna remove this panel right here. Alrighty then, so I took the scooter for a test drive and wouldn't you know, the rear tire was flat, 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 squishy squish. So now we have to change the rear tire. Boy, is that going to be fun. I've got the scooter up on a milk crate, a 17 millimeter socket, and we're going to get this rear tire off change the tube and inflate the tire. And I'm gonna teach you a trick that you may or may not know about your scooter. So here's the thing, when you take this off, there's lots of different parts. There's lots of washers, nuts and bolts and such. I would put them down in order so you remember how they came off. Because that's what I'm going to do. Pull that through. This one was on the inside. There you go. I'm actually going to put a little separating piece so I remember it was on the inside. This was on the outside. 
take this sucker off. This inside spacer. Now we're just going to take it out of the drum brake there and work the chain off. There you go. Two spacers. First thing to do, put these three screws out. I had trouble getting them out using the Phillips head, so I am going to use a small socket, 5 16 instead. I think that will uh, serve me a lot better as the Phillips head screws were just stripping. So you can use a ratchet like I just did, or don't lose the pieces. You could use a very cool adapter for a power screwdriver like this. I'll link to it in the description. I'm going to use a step down to make it smaller. I'll link to that as well. Put the socket on that and then put the whole adapter in the screwdriver. Just be careful because you need a good grip or else this will, the whole wheel will turn and you'll cut your hand up. So be gentle. Make sure you get it started. As you can see, it wanted to do that. A washer fell in there. Wear gloves if you're concerned. There's the other washer. So we're going to get that right there. Keep those aside. Take off the sprocket. Now we're getting closer. Three more things to remove. Those use Allen wrenches. I'm going to use a 3 16th Allen wrench adapter. and stick it in my power screwdriver because I'm too lazy to go find my Allen wrenches. Oh yeah! Ooh, it's tight. One. Again, keep your pieces together so you remember because there will be a washer there as well. You think you'll remember, but you won't. There's another one. Again, hold on to it tight. Another one. And the part it goes. There is the uh, spacer we need to be careful with. We want the spacer to go back on the tire. And now we're just going to pull the tire off, and there it is. The tube is inside there. And just simply yank it out. That's it. There's the old dead tire. What a piece of junk. There's a little rubber washer type thing that went on the stem and I'm going to keep that just in case. Let's open up the new tire and check it out. It's right here. I'll link in the description where you can get yours. This is a Kenda tube. 200-4 or 200 star 50. That's how you'll see it listed on the internet most of the time, like 200 star 50. Let's open this thing up and see what it's all about. Oh boy, okay, there you go. So yeah, no, no rubber washer on it. So I'm gonna take this rubber washer and slide it on right over the nipple, it fits perfectly. Hopefully you can see that. Just gives it a little protection. And then we're gonna stick it in the tube. This should be fun. There you go. Now let's uh, blow it up a little bit and see it work. All right, let's put some air in it and see it take shape. We're gonna finish filling it once it's installed on the bike. Because I'm gonna show you a trick. Wow. Fancy, really cool. Nice. Let's put it back on. When the tire's blown up, you're gonna notice there's actually an indentation 
where the original little rubber kind of washer type thing was on the original tire so I'm keeping it on since the space is there for it let's put it back together and see what happens now I may have blown up too much and have to let some air out but we'll see putting this through here so that'll keep the spacer in place sliding the tire over it Sliding this over the tire, lining it up with the fill valve. Okay, now we're gonna put these back on, but you may have put too much air in the tire, so you're gonna have to press a little out to do that. It won't take much, as you can see. blow it up some more again not all the way just a little bit I did 20 psi and you can see it it uh, seated really nicely I'm listening for any air make sure that the, the uh, valve stem isn't defective or leaking and the tire is seated real nice. So now we're gonna put it back on. I'm tilting the scooter on its side because getting these spacers in is really difficult. So to put the tire on, it, the, the spacer on is really hard. I'm gonna pull this disc brake down and I'm gonna put the spacer on and the tire over it. And then I am going to put these spacers in order. Small black washer, silver washer, large flat metal washer, small black spacer. And then we're going to set it up like this. That's the way it's going to be installed. Just as, just as low as physically possible. And then swing the tire over may need to lift a touch and push through you'll get through the spacer and I'm just going to jimmy it a little bit because you're gonna get through the spacer and the tire as well which can be challenging but you can do it and there you go I'm through both spacers now to put the chain on we'll start at the top and just slowly turn the tire and sink the chain onto the wheel. Don't rush it, and it will go. There you go. The chain is on. Time to finish the job with the larger spacer, which will push in right there, followed by the large metal flat washer. We're going to push the screw through. The metal washer and then the lock washer and then the final nut when you tighten this you want it pushed all the way up you want this tire locked all the way up put a long socket over it i'm using a 5 eighths and we'll tighten it down now to finish the tightening you may need to hold that bottom bolt with a wrench of some kind. There you go. Tight as can be. And it's time to lubricate this chain while we have access to it. I'm gonna use Motul MC Care Chain Loop C2 Road. And we're just gonna spray it on the chain. I want to give it a little bit of a brush with it. This is a chain brush. I use this for my motorcycle. The motorcycle chain is larger. You can get inside like this and scrub both uh, the, the back and sides of the chain. 
This chain's a little small for that method to work, but uh, I'll take what I can get, just to give it a bit of a scrub and some good old lubrication. And of course, to prevent rust. So there you go. Now that the tire is on, the real trick is how do we put the rest of the air pressure in? How do we reach that? How do we do it? Well, here's the trick. See this right here? Extender tool hidden inside your handlebars. That's right. There it is. I take the extender tool, screw it on the stem. Attach your pump. And have at it. 35 pounds right there. Doesn't take much. When you're done, take your extender tool. Stick your tool back inside your handlebar and stick it back in here. Now your handlebar may be complete. If that's the case, you'll have to take it apart differently. This is how mine is. Now you've got that tool ready to uh, fill your tire with air anytime you need to. And the final stage is to put it back together, which I'm going to do right now. Starting with the chain guard. The chain guard slips underneath and then over. And it's two simple Phillips screws. gentle because the threads are metal but the chain guards plastic so it'll be all too easy to crack the chain guard and then it won't stay on so just firm and that'll do it time to stand the bike up put the cover back on and give it a test run It works. So that's how you save a Razor E200 scooter from the trash because that's not garbage.